Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the on-site renovation group for August 21st, 2018. We're here at 2744 Green Valley Road in Snellville. This is a property we visited back in May, on May 1st, actually, when we were just getting started with the house. And in, in fact, you may recall Don kicking in the wall while we were at the on-site, uh, talking about the wall we were going to take down. So we're back at this property. It's 99% finished. It is staged. It's ready to go onto the market later on this week. So you're going to check out the finished product. I also want to tell everybody that one of our sponsors is Baker Collins. They are a hard money lender. You'll get to hear from Joseph in a few minutes. They can fund your product in days, not weeks. So if you're looking for a rehab loan for a project like this, Baker Collins would love to give you some money. I also want to remind everybody we're now meeting on the first and third Tuesday of every month. So we added another day so that we could go visit more job sites. We meet at noon on the first and third Tuesday at real job sites, whether it's just getting started, whether it's halfway finished, or whether it's completely rehabbed. And we will go back and revisit some of these rehabs so you can see the finished product. Also want to remind everybody we're no longer broadcasting this on Facebook Live. We're simply recording these and putting them up online later. So if you don't watch replays like this, you can watch them on Facebook at facebook.com slash onsite Atlanta. We also put them up on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Atlanta Rhea. So check us out online and watch all of our replays because we've done some really, um, we've been to some really nice rehab projects. So I want to remind everybody one more time, we're at 2744 Green Valley Road in Snellville. This is a project that's been managed by Chrissy, my wife that Don, myself, and her have been working on along with some of our helpers who are here today, such as Alan uh, and, many, and Alex and uh, many others. So let's get started. All right, this is the property, as you may remember. It's a nice neighborhood in Snellville. Some of the properties have been rehabbed, some of them haven't. This one next door hasn't. So this one has. You may remember the big magnolia tree that was here and some of the other trees that were here. Uh, so it's made a bit of a massive transformation. So we got a nice crowd today coming out to check it out. So we're gonna get started. Well, hey, I appreciate everybody coming out today. This is the on-site renovation group. How many of you were here back on May 1st when we visited this property the first time? Only a few of you. Well, if you'd like to see the massive transformation, you can go back and watch the replay on our Facebook page. It's uh, facebook.com slash on-site Atlanta. And we also put it up on our YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash Atlanta Rhea and see the amazing transformation. But if you didn't, I'm sure Don probably has some before and after pics he can show you on his uh, iPad today. But, and we'll kind of describe what was, what, was, what was changed as well. But this group is for folks who want to uh, get into fixing and flipping um, and learn from other active investors and what they're doing. So you'll see properties from new investors that we go out and visit like the one last week down in uh, Lakewood, Damon and Michael's property. Massive renovation project they've got going on. They just barely began. So you can see that one online and come back and view that in a few months when they're finished. Versus intermediate investors, versus investors that have been doing this for years. So you're gonna get to see all different facets of real estate investing as we tour some of these properties. Um, so if you're interested in fixing and flipping, please continue to come and see what we're doing, see what other people are doing and perhaps we can come visit one of your properties in the near future. We'd love to do that. So we're here today with uh, Don DeRosa, my wife Chrissy, Alan, and a lot of our members and friends. And before we get started, we do have a sponsor that I want to mention, and that is Baker Collins. Uh, Joseph Castaneda is here today, who is a hard money lender. So he- How's everybody doing? Right. Okay. Yeah, so he funds deals like this. So if you can kind of stand over here, you got a little bit better backdrop than the garage. 
make sure you catch the door. It's beautiful. And you guys can kind of gather around, and he's going to tell you about what. Hey guys, let's go. He's going to tell you about what they do, and how they can fund your next rehab project, and what some of the criteria are. Which is, you can stand up there and make. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm short, right? No, it's just. Yeah, we need to get you a box, man. I know you need to no. get a box. Are you ready? Uh, he, right, he that said, wasn't what I meant. He said it, not me. That wasn't what I meant. Right, how's everybody doing? All right. Great. Good, good. Uh, my name is Joe Castaneda. I'm a bilingual account executive with Baker Collins. And what we do is we fund projects like this. Uh, the number one reason why people don't invest into uh, real estate is because they don't have funding. They don't know how to get funding. That's what I'm here for. I'm going to explain to you exactly what uh, an investor goes through as far as from start to finish, acquiring the property to selling the property at top market price, right? That's what you guys want to do, right? So um, if you guys have any questions, I'll be here. I'm going to pass out my business cards. And we're going to do a little, uh, how do you say it, uh, scenario uh, as they start talking about numbers and what they've spent um, out of pocket. So thank you, uh, Dustin, Don, for having us here. Yeah, we appreciate having you here. Did you bring plenty of business cards today? I got them on me. Very good. Absolutely. Thank you. Do you have an assistant with you today? An assistant? Yeah. Yes. We got Selena in the building. <laughs> Selena. Hey. I thought so. I just want to give her want to give her a little shout out. It looks like you guys are broadcasting this on Facebook Live. As well. We are. As well, yeah. Yes. We used to, but now we're just recording them and getting a really good high quality HD video. Yeah. And not having the signal drop all the time. So we will be putting this up on Facebook. It's just not live anymore. Awesome. Awesome. We're getting a much better, much better quality video. Guys, I know you, it's very important you guys to stay close to the fire. If you guys really want to do this as a long-term journey, guys, stay close to the fire. These guys have done all of the work for you. I mean, they've done, they already know what uh, challenges, you know, that you guys don't need to go through, right? So you just want to go ahead and stay close to it. You know, they have an amazing group as well. You know, if they have, you have any questions, you go, you go to your mentors because guess what? Somebody taught them, and now they're doing that for you as well. You know, so once again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. We appreciate. It. Let's give it up for Joseph for being here today. Yeah. Okay. Also, before we begin, again, I have another friend in town from Tampa. Uh, some of you might have met her last night at the Beginning Investor Group. This is Tangy Cousins. Hi, everybody. Hi, she sells hot leads. She's a list provider. You might might have heard of Tangy's List. So. A lot of the deals we do are probate deals where someone is deceased. In fact, we're working on one right now just down the street mm -hmm. where the mortgage holder is deceased and the house is upside down. So not only does it have to be probated, it's also got to be short, short sold. Sale. So it'll be, I think, I don't know if it's your first time, but the first time we've ever had a deal with a short sale and somebody that's dead. No. It, but it's I haven't. So it'll be a first for, for us. So. Yes. Every deal is going to have its challenges, and this just happens to be yeah. for this deal. Um, there is, I've done lots of deals, and there hasn't been a single one that I haven't done that you haven't had a single had some challenge different. Well, you have to tell us about the challenge on this one because this one went pretty smooth. But let me From get a rehab. Yes. Yeah. Let me get Tangy before we get into all that. That way we don't have to interrupt you. Sorry. So Tangy, uh, tell us about what you do real quick and what you can do for these folks here today who are looking to do fix and flips or buy and hold. Thank you, Dustin. I'm a nationwide lead provider. I provide leads to realtors, investors, and attorneys. And we have about 25 different types of leads that we can offer you. Just to name a few hot ones, we have probates, pre-probates, inheritance, divorce leads, absentee owners, pre-foreclosures and auctions. And we can also customize your list for you. And we're doing a special for anybody who attended this uh, renovation group today. We have a buy one, get one free going on right now. So you can purchase a county and get a free county at no extra charge. So that's the type of leads that we do offer. And as I said, we can customize them for you. So if you want um, a certain age range of the property, age range of the owner, the you know basically specific area, zip code, we can do that too. Uh, my contact information is 813-563-0005, extension two, or you can reach me on my cell at 863-698-3550. I also have some flyers here I can pass out if you'd like. Just mm -hmm. come see me and I'll give you a flyer. Absolutely. Just for the record, just for the record, we also get her leads. So, you know, just. Is it a one time fee or a month? So it's a three month commitment for around five to six hundred dollars, any list that you want. Okay. And uh, we give them to you fresh and weekly. And all of our data is farm for real estate, which is unlike any other provider. A lot of providers out there can give you 300 probates, but only five to seven percent of the people that die are actually going to physically own real estate. You don't want to send letters to 300 people when you only need to send letters to 15. 
on a six step mailing campaign, that's an $1,800 mistake. So definitely, definitely come see me because we have weekly fresh data farm for property. Did you guys catch that? No, not all the people that are in probate that die have real estate. So if you were to go down to the courthouse and pull these yourself, you've got to whittle all those down to people that actually have assets, actually have real estate. So they do that for you so you don't have to. So if you don't know Tangie, she's a member of our Tampa RIA group. Many of you don't, don't know that we have a Tampa group as well. And she's one of our active members and sells these leads to a lot of our local folks down there who do quite well with these lead lists. So I wanted to have her up here so that you too can take advantage of some of her leads here in the Georgia area because she doesn't have a lot of clients up here right now. So it's kind of wide open. Yeah, She's the competition got a... is very minimal. You don't have a lot of people you're competing with. You might be looking at one of them right there and there. Uh, right. <laughs> so, but just there's enough to go around, you guys. Right? Definitely enough to go around. Well, Don and I are a team, so. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, thank you, Tangie. It's pre appreciate you being here. Let's give it up for Tangie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for attending. And by the way, Tangie's going to, if you missed last night at the beginning investor group, Tangie's going to be back tomorrow night at my office in Buford at 1960 Schuyler Hill Drive for the property protege group. Uh, she's going to be talking a little bit about what she talked about last night, which is these lists, these leads. And tomorrow night at PPG, it's all about marketing. We call it marketing madness. We're asking everybody that's in PPG to bring in your marketing for show and tell. We're going to show off what you're doing, what you're doing right what you're doing that you think's not working and maybe how to tweak your marketing and make it better and get you more leads coming in. So we hope to see you uh, guys there tomorrow night. And anybody that comes there tomorrow night, I'll give a free letter to you because I do teach the do's and don'ts of marketing, okay? All right. Thanks again, Tangie. We appreciate it. All right, Don and Chris, you guys ready? Yep. All right. Now, if you guys need to mute your mic. I did. We got it. Um, you just, just push the button and it turns red. Push it again. It turns green. You push it too hard. It turns off. Oh, wait, say that again now? Don't worry about it. You're on, you're I hot. I want to wait for Daphne, but it's okay. She, she'll get here. Yeah, she's on the phone. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, first of all, before we start, a lot of these folks don't necessarily know you, especially you, Chrissy. Can you uh, take a quick minute to introduce yourself? My name's uh, Chrissy Griffin, and I'm uh, Dustin's wife, and I run Atlanta RIA, Tampa, all the RIA groups, and renovate with Don DeRosa. And, uh, and how, long, how long have you been doing this? Well, how long have I been in the business? Yep. What, 15 years, 16 years? It's been a while. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. Now, over the years, I know you've done rehabs in the past, but you're getting back into them again now, Correct. aren't you? Yeah. We're always just doing wholesales. So you've done two, including this one. Two in the past six months. Yep, and I know you helped out with a couple others. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, you've kind of gone from zero to hero real quick right. in this business, as you'll see. As you'll see. Yeah. yeah, I have to say, um, this house, although it's titled and owned by my company, I really can't take credit for this house. Um, you know, I'll, I've done some of the big stuff at the beginning, like the design of all that and laying everything out, but I have to give Chrissy all the credit for this house. But you kicked in that wall. And Alan. I did kick in the wall <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, my forte is going in and having a vision of what the property should look like. Right. And that was... He doesn't get his hands dirty. I get my hands dirty and he does all the design and help. Yeah, yeah he's, so, not ha he's not happy when he gets yeah. his hands dirty. Yeah, so I, you know, I take out the walls and do the, what I, for lack of a better word, the CAD drawings and you know, say, okay, this is what I think the vision of the property should be. The bathroom should go here, this, that, closet here, doors here, so on and so forth. And that was pretty much... Pretty much where it ended for me. Then he turns us loose. And then Chrissy has been working on this, and I have to say, literally tirelessly, for eight weeks. Probably about ten. Alan and I both. Ten weeks. We were here and on I'm, May first. So when you were kicking in the wall. May first. Is that when it was? That's when we did the last onset renovation group. We okay. came out here with PPG two. So then. also right. I have to recognize Alan, and he's been here almost well he's, he's probably been kid. here more than chrissy yeah. actually right wave so they know which one's alan we're here, we're so, here huh? we're here all the same time here. yeah so i mean Al, if if they weren't for these two this house wouldn't look anywhere close to this uh you know i have to tell you so i thank both of them for this but you'll see their labor of love um this house was bought we bought this house i want to say 60 
60,000. 62. 62. 62. 62. You had it for 50, and then they wanted 10 more. Well, I, you, know, you mentioned challenges. Every deal has its challenge. Uh, there's a matter of what house I've ever done, they've all had challenges, whether it be on the rehab challenge, the buying challenge, so on and so forth. This challenge for this, it really wasn't a challenge as much as it was. This house took me about a year to a year and a half to get under contract. So those of you that are brand new, I tell this to every single person. If you're, in, if you're a PPG member, you've heard me say this a thousand times. 85% of your deals that you get, that you rehab, that you buy, that you purchase, will come from follow-up not necessarily from your initial contact. So this deal was brought to me by a coaching student. Um, and we met with the gentleman, loved it. I mean, we made him an offer. I think we made him an offer 50, 50. 55, something like that. And he said he was on board, but he had to, this was owned, this was a family house. The parents lived here. He was the son. Uh, the parents passed. He's, he's a little bit older than me. Um, the parents passed, but his brother lived in this house, and he was in a wheelchair. Okay? So he, the, the gentleman that I bought it from, eventually, he had his own home, his own family, so he moved out, but the brother was still here. Well, when the brother finally went and had to go to another type of care facility, that left this house empty and vacant. But it, the problem was it was still in both of their names. So he couldn't sell it until he either bought his brother out and it complicated the matter because the brother was in a care facility that um, was basically taking the money. So it had to be very carefully dealt with. So it took about a year to a year and a half before they finally finalized it all and because of the extra additional cost we ended up paying 62,000 for it as opposed to our initial offer but the market also uh, heated up a bit which allowed us to ride that wave a little bit better okay so I will tell you uh, also so I've recognized Alan uh, all the any we have any other contractors here or anyone mm -mm, John and Mark okay and or Alex Aaron. Or I also want to recognize Aaron because he's been working with us. Aaron, tell us. Uh, get up. Our superstar with, realtor. Aaron's with <laughs> Keller Williams. If you need a guy that can get you top dollar for your house, dude, he's your man. Um, well, he can get you top dollar if you rehab right. Well, I'll let him tell. I'll let him tell you what he needs. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, guys, I wasn't expecting to speak today, so I look a little. I just came to do some work. Actually, I was doing. You look better work. than I do. <laughs> But, um, but no, it's been amazing working with this investment group. They, they make the houses easy for me to sell. Um, you know, the biggest thing is just making sure that they're able to get the, the top amount for the house. So, you know, if you guys are able to put the right investment into it, make it look the way it needs to look, I can get it to the highest point, pass appraisal, and make sure we make it to the closing table. So, um, so we sold one Lancelot. Lancelot. That, that was incredible. I mean... You know, we listed it at 229 and, uh, you know, I just kept all the offers coming in, kept playing all the agents against each other. So we, we listed it, and how long did it take to get the first offer? The first offer two came hours. within two hours. Two hours. And then from there, we just kept, I kept playing all the agents against each other, and then we finally got it to 245, which is incredible in a Lawrenceville market. Yeah, because the neighborhood really comps out around 180, 180. at max. At yeah. max. So, you know, it was, it was, you know, you, you definitely. Woo, I want to give a round of applause for that. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So, so, you know, you definitely got to have a strong relationship with their appraiser. When it's time for their appraisal to happen, I come in the best suit, the best Armani suit I have. Oh, yeah? The best <laughs> shoes. And, you know, I, I want to make sure that they understand that, hey, look, we're here. We're serious. We want to actually change the neighborhood. I, I, I give them a sentimental understanding that we're, we're here to revitalize people's neighborhoods mm -hmm. you know when they hear that they see that it's not just about the money it's about what we're trying to do for the community and that makes them feel like they're inclined to give us the price that we need so it's been a pleasure working and it does help that you do your houses if you're in the renovation game and this is what you want to do you know, I always tell the students that come to me 
there's three types of renovations. There's an A type, which I consider this to be an A type renovation. Then you have a B, which is not quite as nice. And then you have a C, which we typically term, term as lipstick on a pig. Yeah. Okay. Understand in this business, a lot of folks, um, they don't understand how those numbers work. You, especially if you're brand new and you're buying from wholesalers. Um, let me do this. I can't hold that. I'm Italian. I have to talk with my hands. <laughs> so if an A type renovation, a lot of times wholesalers will give you when they tell you that you could sell this house, this house is an ARV of, and they'll give you the top end price. They'll give you the top edge, but then they'll tell you that this house, we'll use this house as an example, made $20,000 in repairs or $30,000 in repairs. Okay. Well, they're giving you a lipstick on a pig renovation cost. So they're, they're stretching that this way. Well, in reality, it doesn't work that way. In reality, if you want this number, your renovation has to come up to match that. So if you're going to do a B renovation down here and your, your, your price is going to, it's going to be like a seesaw, if you will. So if you want to give yourself the best opportunity to sell this for top dollar, you have to put money into it. So we have another coaching student right down the street in Snellville doing a house that he put under contract. And this is an incredible deal. So incredible. Can I, can I take a second to tell yes, you about it? Yes, it's amazing. Because I want right. to go see it sooner or later. Yeah. So, okay, and this gives me another opportunity to talk about PPG. We have a group coaching called Property Protege Group. If any of you are not familiar with that, how many people are not familiar with that? Okay, I'm going to give you an invite right now. We meet on Wednesday, every Wednesday, at se 7 o'clock usually. Um, we are meeting this Wednesday, and it's group coaching. We have probably 100 and some people in that program. Where's your P who's the PPG P members in the group? Okay, so people that have their hands raised, if you want to learn more about it, don't talk to me. Talk to the people that are part of it. They'll be able to explain it to you. Um, but basically, what we do is... Uh, we meet each week and we coach you throughout the whole year. So anyways, so Marcus brought this deal to us and said, I don't know if I want this deal. I think this deal is kind of a little over my head. I don't even know if it's a great deal or not. So we started looking at the numbers and I said, okay, fine. Let me go take a look at it. The minute I saw this house, I said, hmm. this is incredible. So the guy wanted $90,000 on this house. Now in that part of town, Houses are selling 170, 180, for, but he's on, he's unique because he has 2.7, almost three acres. And it feels kind of rural. It's not like it a does. development like this. So, so when I looked at it, you couldn't even get back to it. It was so overgrown. So you walk back a quarter of a mile, I swear. And all of a sudden there's this ugly i mean Did when you i guys say have ugly, your machetes to get through all that stuff we use a neighbor's drive yeah okay. it was i mean it, when i say it was ugly it was ugly, we got, ugly. we'll show you we got uglier pictures. than this yeah when we go inside Way i'll uglier. take my ipad and i'll show you the kind of a before and where he is now but the incredible deal and this is why i tell people because if you're thinking about doing real estate and you're not in our group coaching this is something you might want to think about why he said that he wants 90000 We did the thing on the board. I went and looked at it. We came back and the guy said, we said, we made him an offer of forty grand. He actually took the offer of $40,000, but he didn't want the money. We offered him owner finance. So one of the things that we negotiated was we negotiated, if any of you know what substitution of collateral is, and who does not know what that is? Okay, substitution of collateral. So there's two things we put on that. We put a subordination clause in his owner finance deal, which allowed his, the subordination clause just says that his loan is subordinate to whatever we put on it. So we had a private lender or his money was in first position. So where's uh, the, you would appreciate that type of clause because that puts the hard money lender in first position as opposed to second position. So we substituted and we saw and we put a substitution of collateral in that so that when this get when we sold it, when we eventually sell that and pay this guy his 40,000, he didn't want the 40 grand. In fact, Marcus gave him two grand down 
and a thousand dollars a month for the next 39 months or 48 months or 38 months, sorry, sorry, 38, yeah, months. 38 months. But the guy said, look, I don't want the money up front. Up front. Right. So yeah, up front. we put a substitution of the collateral. So when we sell this house in three months, that lien that's on the property, we move to a like property, just keep paying him a thousand bucks. And that $40,000 that we would pay him is now interest free for us. And we're using it for down payment, whatever we want for that. So it's an additional $40,000 that allows us to work through that on any project that we want. So if you're brand new, that's not something that you might understand at first, but that's what we'll give you. So if you, and it, and it doesn't cost you anything to come to this event uh, on Wednesday to check it out. It, we always open our doors to, to anyone that's first interested time. for free for yeah. the first time. So check it out. Um, Marcus deal is a killer deal. So, I mean, it's, it's killer. that house will sell all day long, 350. And he wanted to ask, put listen at 250. We're like, no way. Well, okay. originally he wanted 200. He goes, well, well, let's try to get 200. And then every time I go out there and I see what we're doing to it and I see how nice it is, and the same thing happens yeah. here. Yeah. When we first did this house, I thought we'd get 190, 200. 180, 190, maybe 200. And then as time goes on, we start getting nicer and nicer. Now, Aaron, where do you go? 245. 245. Yeah, 245. <laughs> and there's nothing around here going to sell for 245. In fact, that house, On the end. three doors or two doors down, that gray one down there, sold for 210, 210 right, Aaron? 210. That house sold for 210? Yes. yes. But it's not updated 210, like this. 210, not updated no like this. No. Nothing. Nothing like this. Nothing. Well, that helps. That yeah. comp helps. And it sold yeah. in a week at 210. Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing that pushed that Marcus's pro, um, amount from 200 to 250 up to, in my opinion, 350 was he has a house. I think we'll get more, though. I do, too. I think he has a house that was a little bit further away than a mile, but it, because of the acreage he has, it allows us to go out more because there's no like properties within that right. mile. Yeah, and it's not in a subdivision. He has a house that's pending right now, the same, roughly the same square foot for three ninety nine. It's pending. Yep. So, I would have had him list, use use you, but his wife's a realtor. His dad's a her father in law's a broker too. Yeah. So I tried. Yeah. yeah, I tried too. I tried. Rehab costs started off at 100 grand. It's up to 150 now, and he was freaking out. He's like, "Oh, I'm up to 150. I'm so far on my budget." I'm like, "Trust me, it'll be okay. You'll yeah. get your money. I promise you." Yeah, because the improvements he's putting in are worth it. Yeah, so he's what not you'll learn, overspending. What you'll learn is sometimes you may get to the point where you you want to do something, and something happens. Contractors run off with some money. You have to do something more than once for whatever reason, don't panic. Just remember, as long as you do the right stuff, he can sell your property for top dollar, mm -hmm. but he can't sell your property for above market if you shortcut stuff. Mm -hmm. So the key to this business, I'm gonna tell you, is if this is your first or less than five, the key to this whole business is having someone on site watching, making sure things get done and under budget or on budget every day. Seriously, I mean, I've done, I mean, I the properties that I don't do that to, or I'm too busy. It doesn't. It has a very uh, adverse effect to the bottom line. <laughs> and Don, I'll just add. I mean, to save yourself some hassle because the inspection is the next part, right? And the inspection can make or break a situation. So um, we've had homes that have had. Pretty rough inspection. So if that was huge. <laughs> so, I'm glad I got that on film. <laughs> so inspection, guys, it, just save yourself the hassle. Go ahead and just do it right the first time to it. When the inspection comes, you're not having to pull your hair out for the inspection report. That's going to drive you crazy. You know. So yeah, yeah. I tried holding your card up. I don't know if it's focusing real well. But tell them how to get a hold of you. I don't have enough cars, so if you do need to get a hold of me, um, you can just give me a call. And Take a picture of the sign. That's true. I'll do that in a little bit. Yep. But well, give me your you, know, give me you can call me at any time. It doesn't matter if it's 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm working out, or it's 11 o'clock at night, whatever. But you can call me at 404 664 6247. One more time 404 664 6247. I got two more cars left. If 
anyone needs. And repeat your name. Ten bucks. Yep. Starting at ten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, name's Aaron Cotterill. All right, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank Chris. you. Thank, thank you. John. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, back to this deal. All right. You were starting by telling us some of the numbers. Okay, so we bought it for sixty-two. Um, I think our original budget was. 60, 60 65. 65, I think. We're at. We went 20 over. Yeah, 60. Where are we at 85? 85 mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're at 85 right now. That's including staging, though, too, I think. Yeah, yeah. so staging costs us 1500 $1, bucks, but you may not get that uh, as your first renovation because. Um, That's just our a price. A lot of people deal, when you deal with someone. And they, you know, it's like, I'll use Aaron, when you deal with someone that the first deal may be, may cost you a little more money. And as you use them and as they get more and more comfortable with you, goes with contractors, vendors, they trust you more, especially you pay on time and you're, you do what you say. That goes a long way. So they trust what you do. So they're willing to, you know, some contractors will extend, like we had a contractor um that did at the punch items a lot of them want paid we had our contractor agreed to get paid at closing you know so you have to be careful how you interact and here's the other thing i will tell you about contractors folks every single one of us especially if you're new you want to come in here and you want to try to find the absolute cheapest contractor you can get and then you want to drive it down even further the problem with that is I hate to say you get what you pay for, but what's the saying you too. said? You can get, there's three things. You got uh, price, quality, quality, and speed. Pick two. Pick two, and you're lucky to get the two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just understand, your contractor has to make money. If you do not allow them to make money, your, pro your contractor may not make the full project. They, they may both. not make it through. In fact, they, and if they do, and you nickel and dime them, and they don't make any money, they don't show back up. They won't come back to your next project. So the key is, but that doesn't mean write a check when they ask for it. That there's a very fine line between, and that fine line starts with having somebody here, all the time, so that you can question stuff. They give you a good quote, and when they don't do it, you question it. Okay and say, why are you, why is it more? You told me it was gonna be 1200 bucks, you're done, 1200 bucks. Why now are we, you know, that way it cuts down on double work, triple work, work that's done poorly, because you can stop them immediately, like, whoa, 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 stop. You know, I had to paint a house three times one time because the first painter that one of my students hired, 30 years. He, went, he gave me a quote, and I'm going to say the quote was 2500 bucks. Well, the student found somebody to do it for 2000 Okay, so they said, nope, 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 we want to save the money. I'm like, okay. I was against it because, like I said, I've used my guy for 30 years. They came in, started painting the house. I walk in. It was a beige color. They had painted the, the trim, the walls, and the ceilings. All beige, all semi gloss. I walked in and I said, but he saved him 500 bucks. So I walked in and I said, What the hell are you doing? He goes, I'm painting. I'm like, Not for me, you're not. Get out. I said, Stop right now. And I called the student on the phone and I said, Have you checked on this? Well, no. I'm like, Have you talked to this painter? Have you seen his jobs? Well, no, he gave, he's a friend of a friend. Okay, there's your first mistake. Just because they're a friend of a friend or a family member doesn't mean they're a good contractor. So, you know, you've got to do your due diligence. You've got to do your homework. You have to make sure that they actually do what they say they're going to do and can do it. So don't be afraid to pay a little bit more as long as you're on site watching them. Because, and don't ever do a project hourly, ever, ever. What about by the day? You can do a project, you can do like, in fact, I would encourage that. If you wanna have an electrician come in, rather than say, okay, I want you to put these six can lights in, what's your per day charge? They're used to hearing that from a builder. 
A builder will come in because they have shells and they'll say, okay, I want to hire you for a day. Well, it'll be a 400 or 450, $450 per day. Well, you would be amazed if you're here, what that person can get done in a day. But if you say to them, look, give me 12 lights, they're going to charge you $300 per light or $150 per light. And the next thing you know, you're paying $1,500 when you could have paid $450. So and that goes for plumbers and electricians specifically. Yep. So can you kind of tell us uh, about the property on the exterior and the way it was and then kind of point out the changes um, you've made? Sure. This, was, this brick was probably closer to that brick mm -hmm. over there. Uh, we, I can only say I don't normally paint brick if I like the brick. Like if it was that house next door, I would paint that because I think that's ugly as yeah. sin. This okay. Was, this was ugly too. This was sort of ugly, but it was okay. I would have been okay with it. But what we did was, and you'll, you might be able to pick it up, but you can see right there, the, mm -hmm. we had a window in there. Well, anytime you make, you do retucking of the brick, or you take a window out or add a window in, or move brick around, add or subtract brick, because you'll see around the back of the house, we had a bay window that we turned into French, French doors, and we had a back door that we turned into a window. Well, when we get around back, we'll show you that. So we had to add brick and take brick away. Anytime you do that, you're never going to match it. But you can't tell in the back. It's you can't tell in the back. They did a really poor job up here. And this was, I would say, our biggest challenge right mm -hmm. here. And, it's you know, not, it's, not it's, it's, not, uh, it's not obvious now. Right. Right. But when we first did it, yeah. it stuck out. You could walk they up and go, times. yeah, but wow. your house, you'd it's notice it. But this yeah, but brick. Obvious. But if, if I hadn't pointed rest. that out now, you probably wouldn't have noticed yeah. it. Yeah. Because okay. the you know, average person wouldn't have noticed that. it. Yeah. But we noticed it because we know it was there and yeah. we know what we dealt with. Yeah. But that was a window. That used to be a bath. Well, it still is a bathroom. But that was, that's a bathroom right there that had a window. But the bathroom was really super mm -hmm. narrow all the way around. Mm -hmm. So what we ended up doing is we opened, we extended the bathroom this way, put the tub here, and we needed that solid wall to put the tub on it. So we bricked that up. We got all new windows. Um, I have to tell you, Letters. I give this kudos to Chrissy because I wasn't, I never, if, if you'd have told me before this project, put black gutters up, and I'm like, ugh, no. <laughs> I got to tell you, the black gutters really made a, really make a difference. I like that a lot. So we started putting black gutters now on the other stuff that yeah, we do. Yeah, Marcus did too. So we put a new roof on. Is Alex here? No. He's not. Okay. I was surprised he's not okay. here. Okay, Alex put a new roof on. <laughs> you know, the other thing for PPG members, if you're, we have a lot of contractors that are PPG members that they can help out. Okay, Alex is a PPG member and he put the roof on. He's he a contractor. But you got to treat him good. You got to treat him good. Yeah, you can't take advantage of that. But it's a great way for, to get connections. He's not cheap either. I'll tell you that. He's not cheap. <laughs> he's not cheap. But he sees you every day, yeah, so he's not going to do yeah. something that he's not, cheap. <laughs> is, he's not going to basically turn and burn you. Okay, so he'll charge you a reasonable fee, but you'll see him next week. Yep. You see Anytime what I'm saying? So that makes, out here, he's out here. He'll come out. Yeah. yeah. So he may show those up. types of relationships yeah. are important. So around the side, this, you know, it had brick around here. I mean, it was not the how many we, we wrap these had you'll see posts like that right there and like that, yeah. posts they're like these they're cut. see that post over there on that house yeah, and right that here. post right there this right here repco yeah these posts right here in fact this blue, house blue. almost looks identical to this house it is exactly except this house has siding around the top we just have yeah. brick all the way yeah. around so if you can take this house and that house looked a lot nicer than this one did that that one looks a lot nicer than this one did when we first bought yeah. it but we wrapped all those posts. It didn't have a garage door. It wasn't finished. The garage door wasn't, or the garage in there wasn't finished. So it had all the cedar paneling around it. Mm -hmm. It was open. It was a carport, just like just that. Like that yeah. uh, we replaced all new windows. Mm -hmm. We had a huge, you'll see in here, um, some bare spots that we still need to address. Now this house is probably 95% finished. It's not ready just yet. We have a few more little tiny punch items, 
this being one of them. So um, we had a huge magnolia tree, which would have been, if they'd have taken care of it, would have been a beautiful tree. But because it was so overgrown, by the time we trimmed it out and trimmed it up, it would have looked like a stick. It's so we just said, hell with it. We just took it down and we had a bunch there. And when we get in the back, you'll see that we had, you'll see all the grass or the dirt turned up dirt. That was all weeds as basically as tall as that building back there. And huge, barely, and huge pine trees like those. Yeah, and you can barely see that building back there. There's a, uh, another existing yeah, building back gone. there. We didn't, that was already there when we got the house. Oh, it was? We yeah. didn't pull that yeah. out? There's seed down there now, but it's too late to bring so, straw on here. Um, what else There's did we do on now. the outside? The, the shutters, the Alan made the shutters. They're barn shutters at dawn. Oh, those are handmade? I'm not a fan, but... No. Alan made them. They look nice. Those do look good. We tiled the concrete pad that was a patio. We tiled over that and sealed mm -hmm. it. And uh, I sit took the bay window out and yeah I mean the uh, there's really nothing that you see right here that was existing except mm -hmm. the brick mm -hmm. <laughs> everything was new just bunch just of dirt overgrown roots, bushes just a bunch of overgrown roots. bushes um, it had it had you know how you take bricks and you stand them straight up yeah. it had a whole out. row of bricks that were standing like mm -hmm. on end around everything here everything was like 1972 ish yeah mm -hmm. So if you want to quickly go around oh, back, we can walk around back. Yeah, Don, let's walk oh, this way this and finish that way. Okay, we can yep. walk this way. Yeah, everything's new. And just kind of point out some stuff to us. Well, uh, you know, the thing I could point out here is that is so you, we had a window. You can, kind, you can see it. And see how the brick is more porous than the yeah. brick from 1972, so they had a hard time. They even so, like, put concrete you can over. tell, and one of the reasons why it stands out so, and this is, this is for your benefit, you know, obviously we can't close that barn door now because it's already been opened. But you could see the different texture of this brick versus this mm -hmm. brick. If you're going to do that in the future, make sure that the texture of the brick is the same, especially if it's going to be on the front of the house. I would have been perfectly fine if this brick would have been on the back and you couldn't see it. Yeah. I would have rather taken a lot of the bricks if I was thinking, which I wasn't. Um, I would have taken those bricks from the back and used them up here. And they would have been the exact same brick. I'm surprised brick. they didn't. I'm surprised they didn't. I'm surprised they didn't think of it yeah. too, but because they know. did take a brick. But the reason you see that is because it's not so much the paint, it's the tex it's different texture. Yeah, exactly. And they took some more they grazed they tried it some more, fix, they tried, yeah. but I did see them reusing, recycling the brick on the back. They did. Yeah. yeah and what I would have rather them recycled exactly. that brick up uh -huh. front. Now those are not, I think those are nice looking uh, they are, shutters. They are. They are. I'm just used to your typical vinyl. Wait, we made more. Well, this is definitely nicer than vinyl. Fifty fifty dollar. Well, you can see the circular saw cut. Alan made my mantle too. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we we talked about putting planters, didn't we? Well, no, like a trellis and a splayed something. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. But some people don't like that, so the homeowner, if they want to, they can do it. So we thought about all yeah, those yeah. things, but yeah. all those little features. Yeah. Make a yeah. Yeah, it's some people. Yeah, some people. Oh, there's a little bird's nest since yesterday. Yeah, sure. So, Alan's got to cut this down. Alan's got to cut this stump down. And you'll here. see along here, we along the perimeter, we had a fence up there. We took that down because there was so much dirt and weeds and long grass and. Yeah, it kind of looked like the back fence, and it had a tree you laying on top see, of it. Honestly, you couldn't even see. You could barely see that building, for all the overgrowth. All. Couldn't see the building at all. Wow. So was that the color of the, the brick? Uh, yeah, that, no, that building, we have a new roof. New building. That is the original yeah. brick on that yeah. building. The that's original like, brick is on that building. That we have a new, we put a new roof, new gutters, new soffit and fascia. Yeah. Um, the windows are the same. They, we didn't replace the windows. But you are though, right? No. No. Because uh, I heard you were. We nope. were going to. Okay. Yeah, and on the inside, we're going to put drywall and that's it. Any reason you're not painting the brick? No. No. Because it looks attractive. Just The only reason is expense. And it blends. It blends, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I didn't really see a, a, a need to spend the extra money. Yeah, because we already the, went over budget. The out building was kind of a bonus anyway. Yeah. yeah. Extra, so. so one of the reasons, one of the things we thought about why we could do that, why we could spend a little bit more, or I mean, why we could ask a little bit more, is because of this building. The building. We have a big yard and the building. Did you think of maybe turning the garage into a bedroom and making this a garage? Nope, not no. even a thought. Mm -hmm. Nope. Not even a thought. Could you? Did we think about turning the garage into a bedroom? 
Now this house this. over here did that. This house did that. That's a rental though. It's a rental though. Don't like and, that it's, at all. Yes. and it's yes. looks to, I saw it's terrible. Yeah, people don't so. want that no, it's terrible. Chrissy, I'm gonna let you take over. Okay. What are we can do now. We just whatever you want to talk about. Okay, so ask me questions, Dustin. Well let's <laughs> open up some okay. questions. All right, yeah. so I have a question. Yeah. Okay. I have two questions relating to contractors. Uh -huh. You know how you were saying, you know, if you can't be on site all the time, what if what what about investors who have a full time job? Would you recommend Be careful a then. general contractor who can run everything even though they pay more money? And have you ever paid a general contractor money up front to get started on a job? Okay, that's a question. Don for me. can answer that question. That's a question for me. <laughs> to answer your first question, mm -hmm. if you have a full time job, mm -hmm. how many people are brand new and never done a renovation? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now you need to hire a general contractor okay. because you don't have the contacts yet to sub your own work out. However, as quickly as you can collect those types of people, you should do that because you're going to save 20% at a minimum on your job. So your cost is $100,000. You're going to save $20,000 on your rehab just by doing your own GC work because yeah. your general contractor is going to make a 20% profit margin. Yeah. So if they hire a painter for a thousand bucks, they're going to charge you $1,200 mm -hmm. and all they did was pick up the phone and call yeah. a painter. That's all they did. And then they come in and made sure it was painted. Right. Mm. So that's how the game works. Mm -hmm. And there, when you're first starting, that's an absolute necessity. Yeah. But you because gotta make you sure you have a trustworthy GC though. Exactly, so, so then the second research. question is, how do you find a good general contractor that won't steal you blind mm -hmm. or take your money and run? That's PPG. a, that, yeah, I was just gonna say, you join PPG, <laughs> yeah. is right. I, that's a very difficult question because yeah, that comes with a little bit of skill and I will tell each and every one of you, if you've never done a job or if you're doing your first rehab, I don't care how big the rehab is, don't do it without somebody that has knowledge about it. That's my recommendation. That's, you know, call somebody to help you that's done a bunch of rehabs. Even if you have to give them some of your back end to do it, it will save you money, a lot of money and a lot of headache in the back end of this thing. Think of it like just paying someone for education. If you bring in a partner that wants, that can help you, that's done uh, more rehabs than you, they'll be able to save you money where you didn't think possible. So uh, that's my advice to a person. Now, if you're working a nine to five job, you're going to have a GC. But as soon as you can find your painters, find your flooring people, fly, find your carpentry people, find your roofing people, do it. Collect, start collecting your database of people from day one. Uh, when you go to hire them, you make sure you interview them, make sure you tell them, show me pictures, show me before and after, talk to their cl existing clients, find out if they have jobs that are going on right now, go see that go job. See mm -hmm. Okay, don't tell them you're coming, just drop in. Mm -hmm. Talk to the homeowner or the owner of the property and say, hey, I'm thinking about using your general contractor after he's finished with your job. Because if you don't say that, they're thinking that you're gonna do a project now and they're not gonna tell you squat because they think you're gonna steal the contract. But if you tell them that, hey, I'm gonna use this person after you're finished, after he's finished with you, that puts them a little bit at ease and then they maybe tell you, you don't wanna use this guy or yeah, he was pretty good, you know, talk to them, let them tell you, okay? And what about the money up front? Never. <laughs> Everybody want all at one time say the word never. 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 Give your contractor more than money to get started with materials up front. Never, 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 never. Now, say contract, one more time. Never. never. <laughs> now, what we Some did, like with the electrician, he did a um, three draw. So we gave money, like 2000 for all the materials. Then right. when he was halfway done, we gave him another 2000 And then the last punch, I gave out. Fit, punch out was 1500 Right. And that's how you're going to do yes. it. Okay, what if you pay your money yeah. up front yeah. to the contractor? Won't you get it back on the back end when you get your draws, like the first draw you do? Okay. You can get your money back and the contractor's done one month of work for you okay. because you paid the money up front? 
Say that again. Yeah. Okay, so if you pay your contractor up front and you close on the deal and you're making your draws from your hard money lender, when you're getting the money and you paid your contractor up front, can't you just keep the money as he does the work until you gain back that money? In theory, <laughs> if they're doing in the job theory, right, yeah, in theory, they're doing yes. the job right. Here's they, right. Just and the general contractor, you have. A yeah, so you have you have if you have a good relationship, you could do that. But I'm gonna ask the hard money lender. I'm, I'm gonna let him tell you in a minute. But okay. I'm gonna give you my side. Okay. My advice, because when you go to a hard money lender, mm -hmm. they are going to charge you every time they come out to do an inspection for a draw. Right. Your job is to give them the best, like they'll help you with this, mm -hmm. but it's not really their job. They're mm -hmm. protecting themselves, but it's your job to give a good draw schedule. Mm -hmm. Understand how contractors work. If you go, like some people, how many people have heard like a three draw schedule? Yeah. Okay, That's horrible good. idea. And let me tell you why. Because they're gonna need money up front. Mm -hmm. Well, He's not gonna land. He's not gonna give money out. He, will you give a little bit of money up front for materials? You have to be a seasoned investor. Okay, there's your answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the, most contractors will want some money up front. So where's that money coming from? Your pocket. Okay, so exactly. So when is he going to give me my first draw if it's on a three draw schedule? After. After you get a third of the way through, and that's even subjective if we don't have clearly defined deliverables so if he's going to say okay i'll do a three draw schedule mm -hmm. and part of that is having kitchen all your rough plumbing all your rough electrical and maybe your flooring mm -hmm. or something like that well if you're halfway done through all four of those and your contractor needs money to pay his guys he's not going to release that money because you haven't defined clearly finished that deliverable He's going to say you're not done. Mm -hmm. But well, your country. You well, then he'll come out. He'll. You'll. Yeah, he'll what's your okay. What's your inspection fee? So uh, our inspection fee is one fifty. Okay, that's pretty typical, pretty normal. So, for example, let's say you did get approved for fifty thousand in rehab. Let's say eighty five, right? That's what you got in it. Yeah. Eighty five in rehab. Mm -hmm. um, you could do all the construction withdrawals you want. Mm -hmm. It's going to be one hundred and fifty every time. Right. Now, this is not going to come out of your pocket. It's going to come out of the actual draw. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Um, Typically, the inspector is going to say, "Okay, well, you know, you got your dump, your dumpster out here, and your demo crew. Mm -hmm. It costs you fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. All right, so he's going to come here and say, okay, yes, uh, fifteen hundred. Okay, well, why are you that money? Mm -hmm. But in, in in most cases, as a as a new investor, mm -hmm. you're going to have to start your rehab with your own resources, mm -hmm. and then as as you need it, you could, you could do re withdrawals of five hundred bucks, mm -hmm. but it's going to be five hundred plus one fifty. Yeah, that's every, but that's my but my that's job. no, you don't want to do that. Right. And here's why I'm going to tell you that. If you limit your draws, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is if you don't have that cash in your pocket and you're relying on getting the money from him, if those deliverables that you've set, because you're going to send it to him, mm -hmm. he's going to say, okay, show me your scope of work. Mm -hmm. Tell me what your draw schedule is. And you're going to have to tell him, okay, you're going to release, let's just use three draws. Mm -hmm. On the first draw, you're going to, we have to be finished with rough in plumbing, rough in electrical, um, all the carpentry work and something else. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're not finished with that, because that takes quite a bit of time and you have quite a bit of contractors that are in there. Maybe your GC, because you got to remember your GC doesn't do all this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your GC makes a phone call to the electrician. They make a phone call to the plumber. They make a phone call to their, basically your carpentry guy, maybe your roof, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've got four or five <laughs> different crews in here that they're coordinating. That's mm -hmm. the benefit of a GC. Mm -hmm. The downside is if you don't do a good enough job um, with your draw schedules, mm -hmm. most people, most contractors pay their guys weekly. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you say, look, I want this to be a six week project, I'm here to tell you, never gonna happen. I'm here to tell you I've done, I can't even begin to tell you how many rehabs, and I've never finished on time. Well, once, not one time. We've had them go quick. I mean, this was probably one of the quickest. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you heard her say 10 weeks. We said, what, eight mm -hmm. initially? And 10 weeks is pretty damn good mm -hmm. for this size project. They but, were here every day. Yeah, and we were, and she was here every day. I can't say we. No. <laughs> so, 
So, can so I, let me add something to that. He's on the phone every day with me. You could always negotiate with your GC how they're gonna get paid. Mm -hmm. Remember, you're you're the you're the investor, so he's mm -hmm. coming to help you, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't want to be cheap on the rehab as well, like he said. You want to pay them right. what they're kind of asking, mm -hmm. and you want to really negotiate your purchase price of the property, mm -hmm. not so much the rehab, because. Uh, the realtor, what's the realtor? He's, I think he's right. he's so gone. based on whatever you're gonna put into the rehab, then you could ask top top price in that area, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, yes. you always negotiate that with your GC and say, hey, listen, hey, I got approved for this much. This money is coming to you. Can you work with me? Can uh, you hold on. Don't do that. Oh, wait, no, 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 don't no, tell no, the don't no, tell no, your no, rehabber. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. I was like, don't tell your contractor that How you have forty five thousand yeah. dollars for rehab. Yeah, no. <laughs> the, 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 the reason, no, the reason yeah. why is because yeah. some GCs will say, okay, well, if that money's <laughs> coming to me, yeah, yeah, I'll start this this rehab for you. Right. You see, I mean, yeah. and, and it goes, it goes, you yeah. know, it's good and bad, but for, for <laughs> most cases, they'll be like, okay, well, I know that's coming to this project, and you cannot go away without it because if you, if the inspector comes and the the job isn't done, you're stuck, not the yeah. GC. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's the thing. I mean. Don't ever tell your your contractor what your budget is. Yeah. But the other because thing here, is you have a contract with the doesn't matter. That's only a piece of paper. I'm okay. going to tell you right now. Okay. That piece of paper doesn't mean a hill of beans. Okay. And I hear people all the time. Well, well, I'll put a I'll put a clause in there that says that if it's not done within eight weeks, you're gonna we're gonna bill you a hundred dollars a day. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work either. Okay. Because unless you build in one where you're gonna say to them, okay, if you get done early. We're going to pay you, I mean, we're going to pay you an additional $100 a day. That doesn't work either. Getting good contract, getting a good contractor and spelling out um, what they want and how they're getting paid, you want to try to do as many draws as possible. That $150 that you pay him for the There's inspection nothing. in the grand scheme of things is nothing. Mm -hmm. But if you money. go three draws and your contractor is three weeks into this and you haven't paid him a single dime because his draw because your first draw schedule isn't complete. But remember, you're paying him up front. Yeah, but so not everybody has money. not everybody has that kind of money. Okay, okay. That's okay. assuming you have that kind of cash in your bank account. Okay. Thank you. Yes, L. So I wanted to since we're talking about contractors, what I wanted to know is how often should you expect the GC to be on your job site? If you're paying him to, or to every, day. every day, That's every day, every day. I mean, well, you never guarantee know. You won't so. find Some somebody. I guarantee you that. That's your expect. My expectation is he's here every day. Mm -hmm. But is that going to be a reality? Yeah. I don't think so. Right. Yeah. But day. but you won't know that unless you're here every day. Yeah. Now, if you're here every day, guess what? He'll be here every day uh -huh. because he knows you're watching him. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, but yeah. if you're not here every day, then he's going to skip days because I'm not going to go today. I'm not going to go today. I'm not going to go yeah. today. And when you come and he's not there, if you've skipped a week and all of a sudden you come and say, hey, where were you? He's going to say, I, I was there yesterday. Mm -hmm. No, you weren't. Now, I assume, you know, I'm making statements like this saying that every contractor is shady and that's simply not true no. but i will tell you there are a lot mm -hmm. and i'm talking to not necessarily the masses but i'm giving you worst case scenarios stuff yeah. to watch out for mm -hmm. you get a good i mean there's lots of good contractors out there but the key is where i see good contractors go wrong is the investor sets the expectations wrong Okay, it's like when you train somebody, you can't just throw somebody at a desk and say, here, figure it out. Because what their definition and what they think it should be done is completely different. That's why a lot of people, if you really want to be successful and you've got a big project, go get yourself plans. Get yourself an architect, pay $2,000 uh, and have them do the drawings for you. Hand them to the contractor and your contractor will love you for it. Because it gives them a plan. If you don't have that plan, they're guessing. And if you're not there to tell them what direction, they'll put one light in, not knowing, thinking they're doing the right thing. You're going to come in and go, I hate that light. And they're going to say, well, it's a change order now. Mm -hmm. So can you see where I'm going with that? So the, to do rehabs, you have to be organized and you have to be diligent. And be specific in your contract with them. Yes. Right. Line item that yes. Can. You know, you don't want to tell your contractor when they first meet, hey, by the way, I have an $85,000 budget. Because guess where your, their contract's going to come in? 85000 85, Well, their 85000 all in is their side. 
But what you haven't taken into consideration is maybe landscaping, maybe uh, appliances. They're not gonna, they're not, they have nothing to do with appliances. All these things that you forgot, that you assume are in there, they're not. Unless you specifically line item and tell them, and you're not, as a new one, new person, you're not gonna know all those line items. So allow yourself a 15, 20% buffer for those incidentals. So if he's gonna give you $65,000 or $80,000 in renovation money, make sure you have about 16 to $20,000 buffer for incidentals. All right. You know, would you like to uh, relocate to the inside and ask some questions in there and see the let inside me, of the house? Let me show them where the, um, right here is where there was a door right here. We put a window there so you can see where they, I don't know if you can tell where they patched up, but it's not as noticeable as the front. And then here was a bay window. And this was already a concrete slab and we just tiled it. We were going to, we were going to so put a deck on here, we're but. We're not finished out here, by the way. Yeah, no, yeah, it's not finished, yeah, no. That's why I said 98% finished. Yeah. No, we were going to put a deck. Oh. We were oh, going to put. Were. Oh, okay. you were. We were, but I had decking. Co um, people come out and they said, "Why? This is nice slab. Just tile it." So our, yeah. our original thought was so to bring this. a deck all the way out here. That was our original, right. the original thought. But the septic's right here. But as right here. everything goes, our this septic, septic tank is right, right here. Right here, all this is septic. Wow. wow. Yeah. So, so Mark did this and this. So. Yep. And then they, this is all new. You can, you can probably tell where the new brick yeah, is. Yeah, you can see it. Through, yeah, you but it's it. not as noticeable right like the front. Yeah. You yeah. can see this brick to this brick. Yeah, now, it, one thing I see a lot from new investors and contractors, if you don't hire, if you just hire a contractor that's not a, a masonry contractor, they, they will brick this in and they won't feather this in. I've seen houses where it looks like there's a brick, there's a doorway. And it's brick because there was a door here, and they just put that square, and they cut all the bricks as a square, and it looks like there was a doorway there. Well, these are masonry so guys. These, may, you, when you're doing stuff like this, it's just same thing with hardwood floors. If you're doing true hardwood floors, make sure they feather them in so that you can't tell. I mean, you can tell because of the difference in brick, but other than that, you can't tell. This was the closest brick because they took the brick with them. This is the closest they can find to match up. It was hard for them to match it up. Right. So. But they weren't the best masonry. Well, we need no. to. No, they weren't the best. No, but they we, they came highly refract. You want people's shoes? You know, hey Chris, you gonna go through the garage? Yeah, let's go yeah, through go the front. Yeah, go through the front. garage. Let's, yeah. go, let, let's, let's go through the front. Yeah, go through the front. Booties. All right, let's go okay. through the front because you have you can either take your shoes off or you can put or you can put booties on. There's booties up front. In the garage or in the. Uh, and make sure you return the booties when you're done. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Come on, put this here. You say he makes all the difference. Yes, it does. It makes you just want to buy it right away. For Chrissy, what kind of flooring is this? Oh, hang on. It's light hardwood, but it's not really light. Take your shoes off or grab some booties. It's engineer. It's laminate. Floating floor. It's from floor and decor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. They're not the same. No, that's that's shiplap. Chrissy, oh here. Thank you. On day one. Stove. It's. No, they damaged it. They damaged it. What the stone? Mm -hmm. So I think it's not going to be till the 29th now. Yeah, so they. Yeah. Not everything goes as planned. Let's see if we have pictures. If you guys got any questions for Chrissy while Don's pulling this up, just feel free to ask. I just want to say that the first thing that me and my wife done was in this neighborhood. Yeah. Between like 105 yeah. and just yeah. before the market crashed, state 105, we made a mistake. Let them go to this um, hourly. So we paid a lot more money. For the rehab? They charge you hourly? Oh, yeah, you don't want to do hourly. What did you uh, sell it for? Um, I think it was like 170. How much did you put in for the rehab? We can't hear, guys. 
plays me through the right. Wow. Well, he's soft spoken too. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, how long was rehab? How long was rehab? So, they did what? They bought a house here in this neighborhood for 105. They yeah. paid their contractors hourly. What was the what was your rehab cost? Um, and you sold for 170 because I that those numbers don't seem very good to me. Yeah, um, well, he's going to tell you if it had a happy ending or not. Thank God. Wife knows it all. Unless you didn't have to pay interest on private money or anything like Did that. Did it have a happy no. ending? I mean, we, we made a profit. But How much was your profit? The house is 105. 17,000. That was like 10 years ago. Oh, 17,000. Okay, then yeah, there you go. That's better than? But yeah, probably wasn't. This is a, this is a major rehab. Okay, okay. so yeah. let's see. Yeah. I have, oh, yeah. I could try to show you these. How do we do it? We need to get a portable projector, one of those little ones. Okay, so I'm going to try to share with you. Gather around if you want to see some of the four pictures. And then they'll kind of tell you about the interior we have. This was, I'll see if I can stand behind everybody. That is the before shot. That's the outside of the property before we bought it. Or, you know, before we started it. That's the garage. This right here that you see here, you see all the paneling off to your right mm -hmm. and that little niche back there and the door right here. That is where you are standing right now. That's where the picture was taken standing this way. So the refrigerator used to be right here. Yeah. So I'm standing literally right next to the ref where the refrigerator was. Right. And this was a wall or whoever was taking this picture. Mm -hmm. I don't know who. So you'll see back there uh, where Cheryl just walked back before she got there. There was a door going this way, right where, right where, on yeah. this wall. This door. There was a doorway, and the then header. there was a wall here, and then there was a doorway right here. So imagine how narrow this was. And there's the, a closet right there in the corner. The original, so Alan, show them where the wall came out to. So The wall so, went in. So this wall right here that you see came out, actually, it, it went, went back. It, it went, went back. back. It went back, you, you can't really. It was, a nook. it was like a little nook. So this is the opposite side. So this picture here is coming in from that front door, looking this way. Oh, wow. So now on day one, I was here and I, I said, you guys want to see what it looks like opened up? Because nobody really had a good vision of it. So I started kicking in drywall. People were like, oh my God, what are you doing? Yes, yeah, so there's Don kicking in, the, kicking in the wall. So I just pulled some drywall away so you could get an idea of what this thing would look like opened up. So there it is. That is standing from right where the front door is, looking... Out to the door right here. This way. No, right here. It's looking. It's we're looking this way. You know, the refrigerator right is right where he's... John yeah, so right there is where the refrigerator was. That's the doorway. So there was a doorway right here. Mm -hmm. Now, there was also a doorway right here. A door. There was a door that led outside here into the garage because the garage is right behind this door. There's two doors here and there. And there's another door here. This door, this French door here was a big bay window. So this was kind of a little uh, seating, eating area. Mm -hmm. But that room in there was always the laundry room. Mm -hmm. It was just caved in. But it was just caved in. So let's see. That's the hallway going back. Uh, that's one of the bedrooms. Now, this is the bathroom, which you won't appreciate this bathroom, and you can't really appreciate what's been done here because you haven't seen it before. You're only seeing the after. But I'll try to do the best I can to explain what it looked like. I appreciate it because Alan and I demoed that 500-pound bathtub and tile yes. on that wall. Well, so this oh. this bathroom is this bathroom on this side. Hey, by the way, Art was asking about the medicine cabinet if you still had it. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. Yeah. So I swear to God, this, he did. He asked me, do you still have the medicine cabinet? So this door here, so you picture walking in from one bedroom this way. The shower would be on your left here. And then the other bedroom on the other side. So it was a Jack and Jill style. And as we walk back there, we'll kind of describe it to you. Okay. And then this is the master bath. No, that's not the master. That's oh, that's, wait, the that's, that's the handy. That's the handicap Jack yeah, and Jill bath. So yeah. that's that's the only pictures I have. Yeah. Was, so there's the color of the exterior. It is just all ugly. There's the columns, the yeah. original um, window, windows, and the uh, shutters. There's a landscaping that they had. 
Somebody so, was asking, Art was asking about the landscape, and now you remember? So the key thing to remember in any renovation that you do, y'all, I mean, look up. You had the simple ceiling paint. But look up, what do you see? Lots of lights, not just lights, lots of lights. Count them. We have 32 <laughs> can lights total. Huh? 32 Modern total. day track Minus lighting. Minus these because they talked me into these. Uh, yeah, so did. 32 can lights. How do you decide how many can lights you're going to put in? Um, I look at the area and go, okay, I got one about every six feet, five feet. And then I just he, put them in. He's also got the software he uses that shows you the layout. So you can kind of yeah. evenly space them. So I'll show Looking you. down. So I'll plans. show you, so we'll see if I can pull up the, I'm going to show you. Uh, let's see, Green Valley. Uh, hold on. Okay, so this, when I first did this, I checked this out, this is what we're talking about. When I first did this, Alan helped me out with this, and he went through and measured every room. Now, you'll notice right here, that line that goes through, that's where the existing wall was. So when you go through and look at, so you can see that wall right there. That was, that was the original wall, that blue that blue, but I took that wall out. So I have a program that allows me to come in and do a 3D rendering. Now this was before any of this was done. This was on day one. So I want you to pay attention. Does this look like what this house looks like right now, this kitchen? Yeah, that was the vision. That was my vision at the beginning, very beginning. So you have to, you know, so we took this, gave it to the contractor, and, but you'll also see, see the lights? You can kind of see them now that I have it tipped up. So you can put them in the ceiling. No, I did this myself. It cost me, this was a, an, an app called Tap Glance. Tap Glance. Tap Glance. Okay. It takes you a few minutes to understand how to do it, but you have to have a little bit of a design mindset to understand how to put everything together. But it's not it's not difficult. Uh, I, have co I have we have PPG students that use it, uh, and Mike uses it. So Alan uses it. So um, what else? Oh, this floor we didn't. I, didn't, I had a picture of this floor. Yeah, I this swear. whole floor in the laundry room was all caved in, like you can see the crawl space. And if you look under here, you can see some of the original flooring. Yeah, the original. The flooring. ugly original flooring. Yeah. I don't have. This. I gotta have more pictures somewhere. Yeah. And that's that's ship lap. So that's I mean, yeah. So this whole area, we had to when we did the first on-site, we had to keep people from going from halfway through their back because the roof was caved the, in over the there. whole floor was rotted and you'd have fallen right through it. It's all brand, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you couldn't even walk over there. Yeah. So. I will give us a little tour real quick. That way, okay. it'll open it up to more questions. <coughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. It's probably a year. They're vacant for about a year, maybe not that long. No, this house? When he, when we bought it. By the five way, years. five years? It's five years. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, and by the way, Alex is here know. now. We were talking about him earlier, one of the contractors. I figured he'd show up. This oh, guy right here. Caesar. Hey, how you doing? Now we'll talk to Caesar's our plumber and roofer. I haven't seen Caesar yet. Caesar. I mean, Alex, I mean. <laughs> oh, I was gonna, that's not Caesar. <laughs> Alex, I, mean, Alex. I had Caesar on the brain. So okay, so back room. here. Now, this, again, used to be a wall. Now, right here is what we call an LVL, laminated veneer beam that goes oh, all the yeah. way down. Now, originally, I wanted to take this back here, and we weren't, that's, we weren't here when they did that, so I didn't get it done. But actually, it's not a bad, I, I'm well, okay we were, I, we were here, but there was a language barrier, and he didn't understand, so he didn't go as far as we so wanted. So we he didn't yeah. go all the way back to right. here. Which, but I, I, I'm yes, glad that was the case because yes. I think this will work better. Yes. Okay, so I'm glad that that happened. Um, so this wall went in. It was like a nook, and there was a closet right there on the end. Yeah, so it you see the in. distance between that window and the fireplace? Mm -hmm. There is that much distance between the edge of that window and that wall. 
So when you get back to the other side, we took all that space for a master closet. Yeah. And yeah. made this closet bigger because this so, closet yeah. right here so, is only like this. So a lot of the walls back in here moved, and this is one of them. Yes. So this closet right here was really tiny, it was like, like super tiny. 15 inch wide, 15 so, inches wide. So now it's much larger. Yeah, go ahead. We can open it up, yeah. And then when you come into this bedroom, this is where we had the Jack and Jill bath. Right where you're standing was a closet. Okay, so there was no doorway. Like if you were he is right now, there's a doorway right there. Mm -hmm. See that doorway to your left? Mm -hmm. That doorway didn't exist. Mm -mm. There's a wall. That was a wall. The so entry was right there. Was there was a closet door right here. And then there was a, another door right here. To get into the bathroom. And this was one side of the Jack and Jill. And it had the sink. So if you imagine walking in, the sink was right in front of you on that wall with the door going to that bedroom on right next to it. And on this side right here was the toilet. Toilet was right when you walk in the door. Next to the sink. It was right here, I thought. Yeah, it might have been. Mm, it was right here. No, it was on the other side of the wall. I thought it was on the, the other side. Over. Oh, wait. Shower was here. The shower's on this. this okay, you got to go in there. I'll show you. I, there. So anyways, there was nothing on this wall, and that's right. And it was, it was narrow. Because there was a window. So you couldn't a put a tub. There's a window. So you made the bedroom smaller or larger? So smaller. this this bedroom, we stole this closet. But, uh -huh. We created that closet and we stole uh, 12 inches. So, and we made this. We door. stole 12 inches so that the only way we could put a full size so bathtub against that wall was to take 12 inches from this bedroom. Oh, the sink was over yeah, here. The, the um, right, yeah, the the bath a, a standard bathtub would not have fit in that other bathroom. Yeah, it was too so narrow. It was like five and a half foot. So like this door didn't exist. Right. So and this was right the shower. Here was the closet for that bedroom. This was the walk-in shower. No, this was the closet. But then the walk-in well, the, the walk-in closet was right here. Right. This was closet. <laughs> this, this was, was a real the, tiny bathroom. That was the the, the walk-in shower. There was right. no, okay, there was no bathtub there, whatsoever. There was a shower here cuz I busted yeah. on all the tile. Yep. yep. There was a sink and then a toilet and then a window. Yeah. And then two doors on each side. Yeah. <clears throat> so we lost the two doors, added one where the closet <coughs> was, and it totally expanded the bathroom for the full length, and widened it to put in a standard size tub. Mm -hmm. And took out the window. I like the faucets. <laughs> now, this wasn't, by the way, this, this wasn't here either. This was, a, this was a, just a wall. Thank you. On either side, there's a closet. If you step in here. Hey, Chrissy, follow us. I am. Trying to get Because your mic's on. <laughs> okay, so in this closet, you will see the depth right here, how deep it goes back here. Like, I'll disappear. Okay? On this side, you notice it doesn't. Originally, originally, it had this much depth on both sides. Well, I didn't feel it necessary to have that, so I felt it was more necessary to have a linen closet. So we stole yeah. 15 inches here and 15 inches because there's a du there's a duplicate closet right on the other side. Okay. So we stole 15 inches on each side or 12 inches or whatever it was, whatever the depth of that is, and created that <clears throat> closet. And you guys, one thing, if you notice, this door is the wrong side, but because these doors were special ordered and... My guy ordered them. We couldn't take it back, so we had to put it on the side, which made me mad, but no one's noticed, noticed it. it. No one's noticed it, but I, I noticed it because I'm like, oh, my gosh. I didn't yeah, so it. these are special order doors. I like the um, shaker doors versus the panel doors. Okay. So I didn't notice it. I I didn't no, notice nobody's it. noticed it, but it bugs me. But That's it's one of the things you know, It's one thing you always have to make sure you have your oh, doors. So yeah. Right. Yeah, you get get some of those stop, those things. I know, but the light switch, you have to be the light switch on. This one bothers me, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's just this one. Yeah, I would have recognized it when I'm like yeah. when I went to turn the lights. Yes. Off. 
Is this a fully working? Uh, yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't open it because some of this insulation. Brand new insulation. The insulation will fall down. It's brand new insulation, so don't. Yeah. It's all. Yeah. Insulation. This is the closet Don was talking about that they added for oh, the yes. linen closet. Yeah. Yes, we're doing. Yeah. So in this bathroom, uh, I'll let you. Why don't you talk? Okay. So this is obviously the master. So. Okay, this is one thing, when Don and I did the bathroom, I wish we would have uh, done a little bit different after we started doing the install, because we originally had the shower coming out to the edge of this window right here to make it wider, a bigger shower. But Mark, the contractor said, well, you're not gonna have much room to walk through here. So we had to shorten the shower. So next, next time we thought we would put the, he wanted to redo it, but I'm like, no, there's no time to do that. He wanted to put the shower over here and- And we could have. We could but. have, but it was already too late once we, it was already too late, so. Yeah. But here's the linen closet right here. Um, and then we made back in here a master closet, so you guys can go back in and look. So it's, it's like got a his master. and hers closet. Yes, yeah. But honestly, after it's all said and done, this worked out great anyway, so. Um, if you guys want to come in here. The drawer, we know about the drawer. It's being repaired. We put the handle on, the hole's too big, so. Chrissy um, executed everything. She picked yeah. all the tile and all that. Yeah. Well, Don wanted Sorry. a black and white, so I wanted to do something black and white for Don that wasn't too busy. And yeah. people come in here and they're like, oh my God, love it. And I actually like it now too after I did it. You but people great love choices, great. it. Yeah, so I want to, because it's a small bathroom and I want it to look clean. Great and impact. Clean and, you know, make white makes it look bigger. So I just wanted uh, clean lines and all that. Um, so tell them about the uh, shower fixture the and, shower the, panel. and the, um, the the, the uh, faucets. Well, these turn color. Well, well once you put Alex them. threw that away, or the battery that gets hooked up. Don't. They will light up once we hook up the battery packs. Yeah, and then the shower panel. And there's a shower head that's missing that I'm waiting to, for the company to send it to me. So, um, but that's LED that lights up too. But it's a mounted shower panel with the jets. The jet sprays just don't turn them on because they'll shoot out this way. So. Yeah, I just yeah. realized that. Why we should put the door on this time? They couldn't. I wanted it, but because they couldn't. Because that's going to be a problem with shooting the water. Well, it doesn't shoot out. It only shoots out. It doesn't shoot out when you first turn no. it on. No, you have to turn the jets on. So if you it leave them, out. if you forget to turn them off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not worried about that. Cause yeah, you have to make sure the door. Yeah, so when you turn it on, it's going to come out from the top first. They, nobody on those two clothes. You have to turn your jets on. Yeah. 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 Cause I turn them on. They don't. It doesn't leak or anything. I guess so. Cause that's why I checked out. But yeah. Oh, that's what I was worried yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. These light up as well. But we got to get the. Yeah. They, they don't light up yet, but they will. And this is marble, and I really didn't want marble, but the guy gave me a great deal on the marble. I wanted granite, but hey, it was a great deal. A lot of people. Like marble. A lot of people know how much were these um, faucets. Um, like I think a hundred and something dollars were there, but they're LED. They light up. Yeah, so. I thought they were like forty-five bucks each. No, let's see. Are those used? Okay. Yeah, on Amazon. I got my on Amazon. I got well, that. So a hundred yeah. bucks a pair. I think I spent one hundred and fifty for all of them. For those Still two not bad. For yeah. both That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. And how much was something like this? This was two fifty. Yeah. Not bad. It not was bad. normally three fifty. I got on sale. Not yeah. bad. So and then here's the master. That's the other thing with online shopping is you. Yeah. Can search for the best prices. And then so my your, contract is still not done with this. Fixtures. This was because we moved all the walls. This was like a, a duct. A duct pipe. It's a duct pipe. That couldn't really be relocated easily. It's easy. yeah. in the and process of boxing it in and drywalling yeah. it to hide yeah. it. Yeah. So that's going to stay, but it'll look yeah. better when you finish it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I would have got that they turn color by the. So by this the, closet. Didn't Too really low. exist. Yeah, by yeah. The temperature. It was part of. Remember, we told you we moved that wall by the um, over here on the other side of the wall. We we moved this that way. So we moved the wall out because the closet I'm pretty, I'm pretty was on the other that. side. It was like it. So it came in. So all this is new. So this is the master closet in addition to the one that's already in the bedroom. You can't if you're brand new. Worry about taking out. Some and right, because right, we, we knew we were adding yeah. it. Yep. If there is a hall closet right, right there. You can tell I how it comes in. And inspected. If you, if you've this is shorter than the bathroom because yeah. that is the hall closet yeah. on the outside of the wall. See, especially yeah. if you're going to buy it and pay cash yeah. and, or get a yeah. loan. They may even make you. They may even make you do it. But all the lighting I got on Amazon. Like, you know, when I do the renovation classes, we do a two or three day renovation classes where we teach you how to do this. Um, we talk about going, like we'll, we'll spend a day or a morning at Home Depot going through all this stuff. 
But the reality of it is nowadays we don't buy. We go to Home Depot to show you this stuff because it's all in one place. It's in one building. But in reality, you, most of the stuff that we buy, we buy online uh -huh. because you can price match. I got you stuff can, from House too. House.com. Yeah. Now the ceiling fans we got at Home Depot. We did that when we did the. Um, well, we, we did our. Oh, that's when we were doing we the had, renovation. We're at, yeah. we're at home. We're at Home Depot. Yeah, we got, right. When we yeah, did the yeah. Let's go yeah. recongregate out yeah. in the uh, yeah. living room. Yeah. And the barn door is getting. They're getting installed tomorrow, so we had to do a touch up because one of the contractors scraped all that up. So. Yeah. Okay, so that's slide this way, yep. Yep, and I saw another one in there, Chris. Where's the other barn door going? This is Granite Cabin. Direct the kitchen is another company. The, the other second barn door in the other room, where's it going to go? Laundry room. Okay. So let's recongregate out in the living area, and you guys can ask questions. 1960. <laughs> No, it's an air mattress, guys. Yeah. No. Yeah, don't jump on the bed. It's not real. It's a real mattress. It's an air mattress. Okay. Okay. Can you turn this up too? Oh yes. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Yes, come tomorrow. Hey, Chrissy. Yes. Did you guys end up relocating this? No. So you, I remember we talked about relocating, but uh -huh. I guess they didn't have to. Because no. I think had this wall come in like they were talking about shortening it, they were talking about relocating this. Yeah, no, but because not. the wall stayed out like this, yeah. we took the header out. They didn't though. have to relocate it. Yeah, we took the header they took out. the header out. So this is the window I was telling you about where we moved this wall back to accommodate the new show, master got, or, closet. Got to move that thing? Are you, can you move it? Do you know how to move that? All right, Chris, you're, you're, your mic is hot. All right, so if you gather around, we'll, we'll uh, let you guys ask some questions, and we'll wrap up here shortly. So do you guys any have questions? Got any questions for Chrissy? Any questions? Don't be shy. So what do you think? What do you think? You gotta give it up for Chrissy. Yeah. And Alan. Woo. And Alan. And Don. Alan. And Don. And Don. We're a team. So when is the, when is the next one? The next what? The next uh, on site. On-site. Next on-site. Good question. It's the first and third Tuesday of every month at noon. Okay. So I just booked the next one because we had to reschedule somebody that's going to be out of town. We were going to go down to Hapeville and see one of Andy's new properties. Which Andy? Hmm? Which Andy? Andy Bl uh, Block. Ah. You, you don't know him probably. Okay. Well, you've probably been to his, one of his houses. I probably, yeah, probably. Because yeah. um, they get a couple nice rehabs going on down in Hapeville. Okay. Um, he rescheduled with me, so you, you know Mahar Bagat. Yeah. We're going to one of his properties. I don't know which one yet. That's going to be on the first... Uh, Tuesday of next month. So the day after Labor Day. So Don's back. You guys have any questions for Chrissy or Don before we wrap up? All right, Chrissy will give you some PPG information. Don, uh, this young man over here asked about some PPG information. You might as well tell everybody. Oh, um, the address is going to be at the office this time. It's normally at the City of Lights where the general meeting is. But because I'm not going to be there, uh, I'm taking my son to Minneapolis to play hockey. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm taking him to drop him off for the next seven months. So Dustin's going to hand it so, handle it. So since normally it takes two of us to, get, to make it happen at the, at the City of Lights because he's got a lot of it. We got a lot of equipment. He's going to have it at the office. So it's 1960 Schuyler Hill Drive. 1960 Sky is that still called? Yeah. So she Elle's leaving because if you haven't seen, did, did everybody see the event we did this past weekend? Trip Triple D. We had, I think, 700 calls between. So you'll see PPG members or people that were there this weekend run out of the room, take phone calls. They're still getting calls from sellers. So basically what I did for 100 bucks, I think it cost me 150 bucks. I 
got everybody's phone to ring in the entire, if you, I can probably put it up there on Facebook, but we were a virtual call center for most of the day. And where you took live calls from sellers that had houses to sell. So we taught you how to talk to sellers. Then the very next day we went out and drove for dollars. And I think the av we teamed everybody up and the average person got 30, 25, 30 houses. And some people had, I think the highest was 49 houses. So then we had an impromptu meeting yesterday, which wasn't planned, but I thought, well, hell, we got all these houses that were real, true, live leads and deals. I didn't want to waste them. So I challenged everybody in the room that we're going to pull $200,000 in profits out of that room this weekend. And I bet you we do it. We had three people last night at Big that between the three of them, they, had, they were working on six deals. Wow. Yeah. So now you so, guys are, are looking to wholesale or do it yourself? Whatever makes sense. Okay. The answer is yes. Right. Whatever <laughs> makes sense. So that's one of the benefits. And we plan on doing that with, I plan on doing that same exercise on an ongoing basis because it was so popular and so effective. I plan on doing that with PPG members. So if you're thinking about joining PPG, we're going to, we're going to, if you want to, if you want to buy houses, now's the time to join because a, we just started. Last week was our first session. We talked about, you know, getting yourself ready, building your team. This week, we're going to talk about marketing. Dustin's going to spend time. Yeah, it was, it was the first meeting of this semester. We've been doing this for years. Yeah, so each It's week, not the we, first time we just did it. <laughs> it's the first time of this semester. Yeah, so we cycle. Okay, so if you're brand new and you, you know, because it doesn't matter when you join, you can come in in the middle and still get everything. It's just progression. Did you... If you're not thinking about joining PPG, why? I mean, yes. It's that good. You can get the phone to ring 700 times in a weekend and continue to ring like they're yep. ringing right now. Get deals. I mean, the more they ring, the better your chances go up. Yeah. But what do you think, Art? <laughs> yeah. What time is it starting, Dustin? Seven? Seven. Seven. Like Alan said, if you're thinking of not joining... PPG, think again. Good answer. I like that. So um, we're bumping it up. We're bumping the time schedule up from when we meet in Atlanta to 630. But when we meet out in Buford, it's a bit of a hike. Okay. We're going to still continue to meet at 7 to give you time to get there. Okay, so but we do go late. We do go, yeah, bring we go late. A snack and get a so you can be, uh, BYOB, bring some snacks, whatever. Okay. We go late. So if you want to stay and get the full event, be prepared to, to be late. Yep. Yep. But Don's not going to be there tomorrow. We're going to be talking about marketing madness, meaning a lot of our members are going to bring in their marketing, uh, what they've got going on now, so we can see what's working and what's not, maybe critique it a little bit, help them improve it. And uh, Tangie's going to be there talking about her lists and uh, doing direct mail. Um, and then uh, one of our members, I'm, I can't believe he's not here today, John Corbin. He's something happened. Yeah, well, i got to find out. The Amazing Nimrod. Uh, he is a motivational speaker by trade and a magician by trade. So he's the amazing uh, Not Nimrod. Nib Rock. Nib Rock. It's his name spelled backwards. It's Corbin spelled backwards. So that's his stage name. So one of the things he does, he's a motivational speaker as well. So he's going to come in and talk for he's 10 minutes. He's not coming in. Oh, he's not? Mm -mm. Uh -oh. He had an emergency. All right, well, well he was going to come in okay. and do a motivational <laughs> his speech. Girlfriend, his girlfriend texted me and said he can't make it. He's got an emergency. All uh, right, we'll have to call him and see what's up. Okay. Well, anyway, we're going to be doing all talking about all marketing for the next couple weeks. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get as much covered tomorrow night uh, as examining what you have. And if you're a non-member, bring your marketing. We'll look at yours too. Yep. Uh, to see what you're doing so that we can build upon that over the next couple weeks and improve it. So if you got nothing, you got nothing to bring, try to bring something. Because if you're going to go out and talk to sellers tomorrow, what are you going to hand them? So even if it's index cards, whatever. Well, this whole weekend whatever. that we did was all about immersiveness. And I think we accomplished that. Amen. Yep. You know, I mean, we literally immersed you in the yep. whole scenario. I mean, you sat there for the first 
half of the day, we talked about you know what you should say, all the scripts, how to talk to investors, how to talk to uh, homeowners, how to talk to agents. We did some role playing, so on and so forth, and then we went live. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, let me see if I can find it because it really is amazing. And we did it in Tampa last weekend, and, or the weekend prior. Well, hey, before you get that, do me a favor. Yep. Let's wrap this up, and okay. then Don can show you all you want. I just want to wrap up the video. So, okay. uh, did you guys enjoy this? Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, hey, Dustin, I just want to. I have to say to Alan and Christy, like I said, even though my name's on this house. I really can't take credit for a lot of this. Well it, I understand, but the, Alan, Alan, and Chris, Chris, go pat him on the back. Really? No, I'm getting, trying to give them. A, uh, I'm trying to give credit where credit is due. I'm trying to give credit where credit is due. That what you see today is their love, you know, labor of love. So. We're looking for other deals in this area so we can use our comps for our next yeah, okay. deal. Okay. So if yeah. you've got some Snellville, Lawrenceville leads, we want them. We'll be your buyer. Uh, we'd love to. Love we, to are, we are setting the comps in this area, though. Yeah, we and have we, a house down here in Lamar we just put under contract for 215 Neighborhood selling for 180 tops. Um, um, we have... Uh, so I just want to wrap this up. Once again, let's give it up for Alan, uh, and Chrissy, and Don. Thank you very much. I just want to say bye to everybody that's uh, watching this replay. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. And uh, just because the video is ending doesn't mean you have to leave. We're going to sit around and talk some more. I just want to wrap up the video. So thanks again, everybody, for coming. We appreciate it. Good day and God bless.